Hello again. This is Sandra Hart with All Things Life Over 60. Thank you for joining me again today. The other day my daughter sent me an email with a link in it and said, Mother, you know, I think you really should look at this because I found it to be very interesting. So I clicked on the link and I discovered that it was a topic that I really was interested in. It was basically talking about actresses over 60 and what they all had in common. So I started doing a lot of research on these actresses and I found out some very interesting things and they really do have a lot in common with us ordinary women. Out of a list of quite a few actresses over 60, I chose 20 and I divided them into two different categories basically because I am so interested in natural aging. It doesn't mean it's for everybody but it's what I want to do. I want to age naturally so it's just my personal preference but if it's not for you hey that's okay too because we are all individuals and we all have to do what makes us feel happy and beautiful and able to enjoy life after 60. But I have divided these women into two different categories. Ten of them who perhaps have had a little bit of uh, help with Botox, plastic surgery, fillers, other uh, types of enhancement, beauty enhancement to keep them younger looking. And I know in Hollywood the um, it's so important because aging has been so discriminatory with women in our business. So I have divided them, as I said, into two different categories. Those that quite possibly have either talked about having facelifts or surgical procedures or fillers, and those that have completely sworn that they are never going to have plastic surgery and they want to grow old naturally and they're happy with the roles that they are given as older women. So let's go. Let's kind of have a fun trip down Hollywood Lane to see how many things all of these 20 women have in common. And actually these things they have in common with us that will help us stay younger, feel younger, look happy, and be healthier. The two categories I have listed, and you can see their pictures right up here, are Christy Brinkley, Goldie Hawn, Tina Turner, Renee Russo, Blythe Danner, Raquel Welsh, Susan Sarandon, Ellen Barkin, Jessica Lang, Helen Mirren. Those are beautiful women in Hollywood who all have something in common. They have had some kind of procedures done and they also have other things that we're going to talk about in common. The next group of women also have something in common. They have vowed to age naturally and they have had no procedures done. And they are Jamie Lee Curtis with her beautiful gray hair, Sophia Loren, Isabella Rossellini, Cicely Tyson, Lauren Hutton, Emma Thompson, Diane Keaton, Sigourney Weaver, the beautiful woman Iman, and of course, last but not least, Dame Judith. Now all of these women have vowed or swear that they've never had any type of cosmetic surgery done. The first group of 10 say that they have either had a facelift or experimented with Botox, fillers, or whatever was necessary for them to work or feel good about themselves. But going over this list, and I'm going to put the link below for you to peruse yourself and to look at if you're interested because they name quite a few other actresses. But I have thought about all of these women 
and perhaps what they have in common that we can also project in our lives. I mean, we're not airbrushed. We don't earn a living with our looks. We're just ordinary women. I made a list of 10 things that these women have in common. And my daughter did as well. And I found that we really are kind of on the same track about what we have in common, all of us over 60 have in common as women. And the very first thing, and I made a list and I'm going to have to read off of it. The very first thing is these women all were beautiful when they were young and they represent all types of beauty, just not one type of beauty. And that's just like all of us. The second thing is that they found a style, a signature style, and they stayed true to it. Now, some of us have perhaps found our style later in life and we quit following trends. But if you have found your style, this is what I think that we have in common with these women. They have found their style and they have stuck with it all through the years to keep that signature look. The third thing is that they have stuck with their way of dress, even though it perhaps deviates a little bit from the norm of what women should wear for their age. They have stuck with that particular look and it appears to be that they all seem to be effortlessly happy in this fourth chapter of their lives. And number five, as I've said before, some have had plastic surgery, some have not, but they have allowed themselves the freedom to do whatever they want to do that makes them happy. They have chosen what suits them and what is appropriate for them. The sixth thing I think is really important. It's something we should all think about if we can. Try to keep the figure that was best for you in your lifetime, whether it was thin, whether it was curvy and round, but try not to deviate too much from the weight that's comfortable for you, whatever that may be. I know that I have really worked very hard all of my life, except especially through the menopause years when I gained, I think, about 20 pounds, but I really couldn't help it. And once I went through menopause, you know, the weight dropped off and I came back to what I normally weigh. And I'm very comfortable now with that. But sometimes we are either taking medicine or we have circumstances where we have to put on a little bit of weight. But if you possibly can, try to stay within the weight that you always have been throughout your life. And I notice that these women work very hard to do it. And all of them try to wear flattering hairstyles, and that's something that we can do. No matter whether you wear it long or short, whatever suits your face, whatever makes you feel good, always try to have a hairstyle that is your signature style. All of these women also had very fulfilling careers. It just happened to be in the film and television. But I think all of us, if we worked in the private sector, if you had a fulfilling career, there is no reason to discontinue that love of creating and doing and being active. I think the worst thing that we can do when we're over 60 is just to sit back and say, ah, I'm retired. What can I do? I think if you always are creative and you fill your life with important things that you love, whether it's volunteering or doing a YouTube channel or helping others or just reinventing yourself. And I've talked about this so many times. I know you're tired of hearing it, but pick up another skill, something that you've always wanted to do. 
that really will keep you young, for sure. And I think number nine is that most of them seem to feel very confident with their age. They're very comfortable in growing older. And I know in Hollywood that is really, really so difficult because even today, even though there are better roles for older women, it really is a man's world and men are allowed to grow old and have great, still great romantic roles, but women are not. Women are put in a box after they reach the age of 40 or so. And it's very hard for good roles to come their way. Luckily, more and more women playwrights and screenwriters are becoming very active in the industry and they are creating and writing wonderful roles for people our age. And that is a good sign, a really, really good sign. I know that we really can't completely identify with those women in Hollywood. They certainly have had a different lifestyle. Uh, perhaps they've had a lot of privileges that we will never have. But we all have something in common. We all are women who want to be appreciated. We want to be recognized. We don't want to disappear within the cracks of life. And I think together, if we do feel good about ourselves, about finding our own style, about loving the makeup we're wearing, about creating a hairstyle and a look that suits us, that makes us relevant. That makes us relevant to ourselves. And when we are relevant to ourselves, that shines and reflects in other people's eyes. After I went through this list, I, I really had a lot to think about. And to be honest with you, I know the industry. I mean, I did work in film and television, so I kind of know the prejudice that are around there. I worked with Diane Keaton uh, on a Woody Allen film, and she has such a beautiful smile, but she does have that very thin Irish skin. And I was shocked to see how wrinkled she was. But her light and her personality just shone through from within and she became very beautiful. And look, she has been in so many movies. She's been a representative of a cosmetic company. That is just one example of how our inner beauty does make us all beautiful, no matter how old we are, no matter whether our skin has been damaged a little bit by the sun, no matter what circumstances we have, if we have that inner beauty, and I am so, so convinced of this, if you have that inner beauty, it shines through and you are truly beautiful in the eyes of the beholder. And I, that is true. I believe it from the bottom of my heart and I have personally seen it. So forget all of the the, the physical stuff, the, the superficial things about ourselves. If we can be true to ourselves and take care of our health and take care of trying to look as well as we can, and I champion all of the YouTube creators that are in the talent, teaching us about makeup and teaching us about skin care, I applaud them. Because the more you can do to feel good about yourself, the younger you will feel inside. And if you feel young inside, you are going to be young. No doubt about it. Thank you for joining me for this kind of offbeat <laughs> video today. But it was an interesting link and I said I'll put it down below. If you like this video and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I love having you come along with me on this journey of mine. I'm all over the place with all types of content. But I am with you. I am part of your group. I'm over 60 and I want to make the best of every single day of my life. Thank you. Give me a thumbs up if you feel like it. 
And I love having you along on this journey. And don't forget, be good to yourself, spread love, and I hope to see you again soon.